a lot of people go after, after the world. That's what people want to do in life, especially here at Northern California. I could have uh, done the same thing like many of them. You know what prevented me? This is the number one subject that made me not quit as a pastor, not made me live like other people do. And I don't care if I suffer immense persecution, I will still retain my integrity in Christianity. This is the number one subject. It's the blessings of God. The blessings of God is the only reason well, probably not the only reason, but it is the primary reason why I am what I am today. You compare the blessings of God with the blessings of the world. Now, when you compare the two together, you will realize that what am I wasting my life on? Why would I give up this when I compare to this? You only have two choices in life, only two. That's the reason why I kept going here. Now, Satan, he will always attack this part right here. Satan will always attack. Persecution will happen. But even though I go through my down moments, when I still compare the two, that's what you got to be doing. Not what you're feeling right now. That's the biggest mistake people make. Not what you want right now. That's the biggest mistake people make. Before you make a wrong decision and choice, and form a wrong kind of thinking and belief, you always have to compare the two. And then you will realize no matter how unfair this way is, no matter how, uh, how boring it may seem to you this way is, no matter how hard this way may seem to you, no matter how many sacrifices you have to go through, how much of yourself you have to give up, your desires and needs, you will still go in this path when you compare the two at the end. That's the thing. That's the thing. The blessings of the world, you got to understand, at, at best, at best, is this, temporary. That's at best. At best, you live, I'm going to be very generous here too, 80 years of pure perfection. That doesn't happen to anybody in this entire world. Nobody. But at best, 80 years of perfection with everything you want in the world, what does it amount to at the end? It's temporary. Yes, but not only that, it becomes vain because it feels empty and you want something more. Not only that, you go through destruction. Sin always has a price. Be sure your sin will find you out. You never get away with it, folks. I'm going to promise you that much. You never get away with it. Sin always has a price. One day it will catch up to you. Not now, but it will catch up. So that's at best that the world can offer to you. But let's compare them now with the blessings of God. Go to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I would recommend for people online to listen to my sermon called Bigger Than Billions. Bigger Than Billions. I would urge you to listen to that sermon, please. And I'm sure it can be very life-changing to you. Maybe not. Uh, I do know this. This sermon <clears throat> wasn't like number one for anybody, to my knowledge, but it was personally to me, that sermon. It, I always remember that sermon, and that's why I never diverted from the path I'm at. Okay, so let's talk about his blessings. The first one is Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you live in the world, you have to supply your own needs. But when you go on this path for God, God will supply your needs. That's why you don't worry when you're bankrupt, when you're in debt. Yes, sir. Because you have the peace that God will provide some miracle in some way to take care Amen. of it. You know why I don't have this panic state of living my life here as a pastor with the small size of our church and then, you know, what, oh, I need to raise the salary, how are we going to pay the rent and stuff like that with my place and the church and everything? Because I believe in this promise. Amen. And because of that belief in my promise, I'm at peace. I would rather have this than my own way in life where I have to figure stuff out how to take care of my financial security, my future, save up money, clearing away my debts. What's better? Another is John chapter 16, verse 24. John 16, 24. There are things in this life and in this world that you want. But guess what? 
why don't you then just simply live your life for God? And since he owns the world, he, don't you think he can give you the world if he wanted to? So why are you wasting your life going down this path, working your own way for the world, when this being owns the whole world and can just throw it to your lap if he wanted to? Because he grants wishes. John chapter 16, verse 24. John chapter 16, verse 24. What does the word of God read right here? It says right here, what does God do? Whatever you ask, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. See, he gives joy fully. Another thing, so we don't have time to go through these verses, so I'm going to go through them quickly. Another thing is actually Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Yes, sir. That's the best one. Amen. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You make a mistake, you slip up in life, that's your problem if you go down this path right here. But when you go down this path, you make a mistake and you even sin, you got this promise where the Lord got your back and take care of it. I've, obviously, I'm not promoting sin. Sin always has a price. But that doesn't mean God's going to let it go to waste either. He's going to use every action of yours one day for his glory where it will work for good. Another thing is this. There's a suffering. You might say, what? You're serious? Suffering? Yeah, you know why? Because when I live this life, I will suffer. Nothing's perfect. I will face some kind of suffering. But in this suffering that I go through in this world, there's no reward for that. But in this one, there's always reward. I mean, every effort, every sweat that you broke for the Lord, God kept it in remembrance and will reward you in full. Amen. So there's a reward for suffering. So that's a big blessing. But in this life, if you suffer, it's not that, it can't give you that guarantee in life. Another thing is, now this one, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't trade this for the world, is peace. It's peace. This is most coveted. And that's found at John chapter 14 and verse 27. In John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So the thing is this, is that, if, even if you're a millionaire or billionaire, you still, your you still live your life in fear and always looking at your app, always looking up the stock market, always looking up things on how things are going with your money and then with your business and everything. But with me, I always get peace. What if I lose more people at church? That's not my problem. That's God's problem. That's why I'm at peace. What if I lose money? That's not my problem. That's God's problem. That's why I'm at peace. So you got to realize, is that something I wouldn't trade the world for? You know why we don't really care who's voted next for president of the United States? You see all these people scared half to death, and then these people blew up the Canadian immigration website when Trump became president because people were freaking out. Oh, we're going to die when he becomes president. We're immigrating to Canada and stuff like that. I don't worry about that. I don't worry about that. God's in control. Another thing is that here's the... Here's one of the blessings that you never thought of as well, but you also have a, not just reward for suffering, but also God, he gives you an inheritance in heaven. Now, I don't know if you realize that. So let's even assume God doesn't bless you fully on this earth. He doesn't bless you fully on this earth. Heaven will be more than enough to make up for it Amen. because you got an inheritance. You know what that inheritance is? Gold, silver, precious stones, treasures, one. Five different crowns, two. Three, you get, uh, you get cities on this earth to rule. And I mean literally, you will rule for a thousand years. Four, you get an inheritance of all things. And all things literally, literally means all things in this universe, not just the whole world. That's big. And then five, you get a compliment from God Almighty himself. This is more than anything else in this world. God's giving you more than the world, folks. He's giving you all things. Amen. And he's giving you himself as well. The seventh one, and I would like to conclude with this. You know why I would keep living my life in this and not go down here? Oh, I, I want to be like those lost people who have it all. No, this is what matters, everything at the end. 
Salvation is what? Do you know how many centuries and millennia people had to find different ways of getting salvation rather than getting it from Jesus Christ because he did not die yet? Until Jesus Christ died on the cross, we can accept that blood atonement freely. We don't have to offer up a lamb at the temple. We don't have to raise sheep, buy sheep, sacrifice sheep. We don't have to go through all those works that we have to do in making sure we live clean because when we mess up, then we have to sacrifice the lamb again. Jesus Christ paid the atonement once and for all and forever. And you know what? If you think this is not a big deal, I'll tell you why it's a big deal. Because God Almighty himself had to be tortured and give up his life to give you such an expensive gift that no one can ever buy. Amen. That's how much it costed for you to get this for free. And isn't it amazing how many people don't want the gift? Yeah. This is the greatest gift of all. That's why I will never trade it for all the world. Because what matters if I have all the world at the end, but I lose my soul for eternity in a burning Amen. hell? What good were those 80 years? After 1,000 years burning in hell, I'm going to forget all what I felt at 80 years of my best life on this earth. 